Greetings, everyone. <laughs> Greetings and welcome to Redlining at RPM Critical. Uh, I'm Pastor Scott and uh, my co-host over in uh, Arizona. Pastor Tim in Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona. When How are you I doing, point Scott? this way, does it go that way? I, know, I, I think we're probably going to be on the opposite side. <laughs> going on the opposite side. <laughs> Uh, be anyway, like the Brady Bunch. Where... Yeah, yeah, with the squares and everything, <laughs> yeah. you know. But uh, yeah, I'm in uh, Long Island, uh, Long Island, Arizona. I'm in Long Island, New York, and uh, Tim is in Phoenix, Arizona. Right? You said yeah, Phoenix. Yes. Okay. Phoenix. Yep. Phoenix. Okay. Anyway, got a little bit off this uh, this evening, but uh, we need a little levity, don't we? Right? A little yeah. levity. Uh, anyway, this is Redlining at RPM Critical, uh, our weekly news show with commentary and also a word of hope and a word of encouragement at the end of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, make sure you email us at redlining at rpmcritical.com and all that graphic stuff will pop up on the screen. Um, if you have any questions, comments, complaints, ideas, whatever, uh, prayer requests, we're here for you. And don't forget to please subscribe, click that subscribe button, share it with your friends. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't know what to say and you feel burdened and, uh, you know, I'm nervous, I can't talk about this stuff. Just what do you got to lose? You know what? We're, we're at a stage where just send it, send it to a friend that and say just listen friend you know what you might not talk to me ever again but listen to this yeah you know just listen to it so anyway subscribe share and our title for tonight is fearless when afraid part of our alphabet of emotion series as we go through the alphabet of emotions that we all face as human beings here on planet earth But anyway, uh, before we get to that topic tonight, first to the news for February 2nd, entering a new month, 2023. Pastor Tim, what do you got for us tonight? Yeah, tonight we have uh, Russia is now at war against NATO and the West and uh, has taken the invasion of Ukraine to a different stage. A senior EU official has admitted raising the terrifying specter of a global conflict. The game-changing deal among Western leaders to pump sophisticated tanks into the country to blast through the Kremlin's invading forces has sparked fury in Moscow, which has threatened to escalate the war beyond Ukraine's borders. Um, Stefano Sanino, Secretary General of European Union's European External Action Service, said Vladimir Putin will increase in indiscriminate attacks on civilians and non-military targets and retaliate uh, against the West. <clears throat> Speaking at a news conference in Tokyo as part of the Asia Pacific tour, uh, he said Putin had moved from concept of special operation to a concept now of a war against NATO and the West. Um, yeah, that so, sounds like a world war to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we, we've been, well, come on. We, it, this has been a world war almost from yeah, the beginning because it it's and been, you know, a, a proxy war in that sense. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. every, you know, the EU is not looking to escalate hostilities, but is just giving the possibility of saving lives and allowing the Ukrainians to defend themselves from these barbaric attacks. Uh, Mr. Sanino said. Uh, meanwhile, the Kremlin said that the U.S. holds the key to ending the war in the Ukraine or in Ukraine, but refuses to use it. Now, I don't know what that key yeah. would be. I don't know what that um, key is either. It's interesting. interesting. Yeah. So, so uh, wars, yeah. wars, and rumors of wars. You know, as wars we see and... in Matthew, Mark, wars. and Luke. Yeah. Uh, so, the next story. Any comment on that? By no, the way? You know what? I was just thinking. You know about. It's it's interesting uh, that everybody you know wants this war to end, but nobody wants to put skin in the game. It's just yeah. like you know we're gonna we're gonna help you out and give you a little stuff, but we're not in it though. We're, we're not, not in, in the it. war. Yeah. We're not yeah. in it. But you're you're if you know if if my enemy is uh you know is being helped by my you know by someone else, and he's you know to to destroy me, then he becomes my enemy. I I don't know how you are not in right. the conflict. You know, yeah. uh, 
uh, I don't know. It's just I mean, we, we've been funding them. We have troops on the ground. I mean, you know, it's like yeah, no, whether, whether they're going to say it or not. It's, you know, I, I have family members who have uh, loved ones that are there. So, um, really? Wow. So, anyways, um, the next story, uh, and this is kind of interesting because we put all of our uh, eggs in one basket in a sense um, as far as everything is made in China now. So um, we've put all of our manufacturing in, so in China. So we have cell phones, cars, coffee makers uh, are all at risk. Uh, the China-U.S. chip war over Taiwan could exchange uh, or change everything. Sorry, not exchange. So uh, the COVID disruptions to the global supply chain revealed the world's largest tech battle is for semiconductors. Uh, the key to dominating international technology and computer or computing power. Semiconductors uh, or semiconductor chips are basically the brains of modern electronics. Um, the United States isn't the world leader in this multi-billion dollar industry. It's not even second. The U.S. Why? government's, yeah. Um, Why can't we make chips? Uh, we probably could, but um, we've given them all of our technology. Yeah, yeah. So even if we did make them here, they would be able to hack we them. We can't even make spoons, you know, here. So it, it, because everything's made yeah. in China. So that's the yeah. problem. We don't make anything here anymore. Yeah. So uh, the U.S. government's goal is simply to stay ahead of China. Um, and experts are calling it a chip war. Um, and Taiwan is stuck in the center of this fight for the world's most critical technology. The small island of Taiwan clearly dominates the world's semi semiconductor market, and the single uh, manufacturer uh, Chang refers to is uh, TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. And Apple is its biggest customer. So wow. there you go. Computers, cell phones. Coffee, I man, if they interrupt the coffee flow, there's going to be a big problem. Oh, That's yeah. Well, be... <laughs> another story is, you know, their coffee's bad for us now. So um, <laughs> well, <that's gonna laughs> we won't go there. Candy. That's going <laughs> to. <laughs> That's going to be with gas stoves and coffee yeah. and whatever yeah, I know, else. Yeah. They... We'll have to we'll have to ban coffee, gas stoves, and uh, fireplaces. Uh, we'll live out in a little hut in the in the ice field somewhere, yeah. I guess. <laughs> so you know, there we go. We got you know manufacturing, and, and they say that um, a lot of the automobile industry is waiting on oh, yeah. chips, you know, to to finish uh, building cars. So there's cars and trucks sitting in lots waiting to be finished and or there's people that i uh, i've heard that have received their cars but uh to, they have to go back at a, at a later date to finish uh having certain things installed um so there you go we wow. we put all of our ba our eggs in one basket uh, all of our chips in one basket. Our chips <laughs> yeah our chips there you go <laughs> but i'm pumped and, uh, and that's what happens yeah so you know we we've moved everything offshore um and of course, you know the whole deal with uh, with Taiwan and uh, China wanting to take over the island. Um, you know that puts us in a bad place, also there. So, uh, technology. You know, is it, how great is te technology when uh, you can't use it anymore? You rely on it, but you can't use it because the parts aren't available. Um, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So. Anyways, that's that's it for me. And then also I'll, last week we covered earthquakes, and I'll I'll grab this last one again, which was uh, uh, this week our uh, U.S. Uh, geolog geological survey magnitude four four point five plus earthquake uh, came ninety four. So okay, okay, earthquakes in diverse places. Earthquakes in diverse places. It's amazing how many are happening each week. Yeah. So. Okay, so I got some new stories here. Um, Iran says small drones attacked its military site. Reports and videos from Iran speak of multiple explosions and a fire of an am uh, ammunition factory in the Iranian city of Esfahan shortly after midnight local time. And um, a sub 
uh, comment on it. It says some Twitter users say that the Esfahan factory was manufacturing warheads for the Shahad Kamikaze drone that Iran is supplying Russia mm -hmm. for attacks in Ukraine. Yeah. People, this is a multifaceted war. Other nations are a part of it. So, you know, it's Iran, world war. Yeah. Yeah, it's a world war. And uh, there was some great news. Maybe we'll get to it next week about uh, I think I sent some of the team here a link about, you know, uh, some of the generals and some of the people in the Pentagon are saying uh, it's not if but when uh, the war with China within the next couple of years, yeah. it's going to happen. And and they and they've done uh war games and we've lost every war game in a hypothetical setup we don't win mm -hmm. and we're not prepared for a and they said it would be a real war tanks this is not like afghanistan and and iraq and this is a, this would be a real soldier against soldier All a right. real war and we wouldn't win so uh, we're you know would that come to our shores i mean we've never really had a war uh, civil war of course but in well, the revolutionary they, they, war but yeah yeah i know we haven't had a war on, i mean other than hawaii you know being attacked and right. things like that uh which we spoke about last week uh russia has uh submarines off there spy ships and stuff mm -hmm. poking around so they they say that the war might be fought you know in taiwan you know it would be on those grounds who knows but yeah. so that's that's that one story. Uh, let's see what else I have. Uh, seven killed, three injured in Jerusalem synagogue massacre in the worst murderous rampage. Israel has known in years. Seven people were killed in a shooting attack outside a synagogue in the Jerusalem neighborhood of Nev Hakav on Friday evening. Mm -hmm. After a second terrorist attack in the city of David on Saturday morning, the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, bolstered its forces, its forces in the West Bank with three additional battalions. You know, that's military terminology, people. Mm -hmm. Battalions, infantry, anti-tank missiles. You know, these things, it's like, every, like everyone's fighting a war, but we're not fighting a war. Um, and then I had, uh, let's see here, one more. Uh, uh, okay, and, and this is the other side. Uh, the uh, Palestinians are warning the Israelis that any more move to violence is going to make uh, situations there worse, not better. Mm -hmm. The Palestinian Authority condemned Israel's new measures dubbing them collective punishment and a breach of international law. Palestinians have warned that the new measures to fight terrorism that uh, were approved by the Israeli security cabinet on Saturday night won't stop the violence, but would further deteriorate the situation. So, uh, boy, it is yeah. not too much peace and uh, safety going on. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. And every time they give them something you know, in return, they get more retaliation instead yeah. of the peace that they're looking for. So someone yeah. will come on the scene at some point shortly yeah. and uh, uh, provide that peace treaty that, that they're so looking for. They're looking for. And uh, the world is waiting. The world is waiting. Mm -hmm. And that brings us, because as the world is waiting, the world is getting afraid. Every day, every day, the news, you know, it's starting to bug you. You know, the things about the COVID and the shots and all this stuff and and all the crumbling of our leadership, the government. I don't care who you are. It's starting to get to you. And that brings us to our topic for tonight. Fearless when afraid. Part of our uh, alphabet of uh, going through the alphabet of the of our human emotions and reaction to things yeah. so our title for tonight being afraid fearful well what do you have to do i mean how do you live that way uh how can you live and be uh you know be fearless when there's fear all around uh how can you not be afraid some people might say with the crazy news each day and they might say you christians yeah. how how can you not be afraid and you know what? Yeah. For some, it is true because even God's word says something about this world fear. 
the tipping point. Last week we spoke about 1159, but there is this tipping point. And in Luke 21, 25 to 28, Jesus says, and there shall be signs, speaking of the future now, there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress. this is brilliant, hmm. upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, wow. the sea and the waves roaring, a lot of sto you know, storms and hurricanes and all these things. And look at verse 26, men's hearts failing them for fear hmm. and looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be yeah. shaken yeah. so even more you know uh you know the scriptures also t uh, talk about you know yes this is going to be the common day way you're living people are going to be just anxiety over the top mm -hmm. uh i mean people are just not coping they just they just can't it's too much information intake and that's why first john and this is another great scripture first john 4 16 first we see god's love and that's why and that's what we're pointing to people and we have known and believed the love of god uh the love that god has to us god is love and he that dwells in love dwells in god and god in him herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment you will you have boldness in the day of judgment are you okay with meeting god with facing all these things because as he is, so are we in this world. Now look at yeah. verse 18 of 1 John 4, 16, of uh, 1 John 4. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that fear, that feareth, is not made perfect in love. Mm. And so what then is the answer? Okay, and... Uh, what does God's word say about this, uh, about being fearless in times of great fear? Well, in the book of Deuteronomy 429 through 31, then I'm going to turn it over to Tim. It says, but if from thence, now this is, uh, well, it's, it's speaking of the nation of Israel and their battles, but it also speaks about our battles in the later days. This is a very interesting scripture. Came in across it the other day in my daily readings throughout the year, and it really jumped out at me. Uh, Deuteronomy 4.29, But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. See, that's mm -hmm. the if point. If thou shalt seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. When thou art in tribulation, tongue in cheek here, <laughs> what tribulation, yeah. Yeah. and all these things are come upon thee, even in the later days, if thou, if you turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swore unto them. Speaking of Israel. So we see a lot of interesting things about fear, about future events, about daily struggles. Tim, what do you, when you think about fear and, and living through these days, what do, you, what do you think about? I think, at least here in the States, maybe throughout the West, I, I see uh, a nation um, addicted to tranquilizers uh, just to cope with. Their, every, the whole world is seems to be... Uh, relying on on medication you know and there we have again pharmacia and in, in, yeah. in revelation yeah. um but yeah it seems like that's how people cope with with the stress of today um is to self-medicate either through you know stuff over the counter through alcohol or, or um prescription medication um you know and that's that just leads down another path, uh, you know, to addictions and, and more problems. But, you know, the only way that we really have peace is through uh, Jesus Christ. Amen. And, um, you know, I dealt with that personally on my, on my own level of addiction. And I, even though I knew the Lord, I, I held on to things and I, I kept things that were, uh, you know, that caused me stress and pain and, and, uh, and, uh, fear. And until I gave that up to the Lord, I, I was never free from that. And, uh, I used things to, to, uh, 
try to take away the uh, the fear or the pain or whatever, you know, and that would have been through alcohol or, or uh, prescription medications. And it wasn't until I was able to give that up to the Lord and that I was able to, to have actual peace. And it's the same thing with uh, how we are today in, in here in the West, at least, you know, if we were to give Christians, there's a, so many Christians that are addicted. Um, if they were to give that up to the Lord, to give up whatever this stress is or whatever the fear might be to the Lord, they would be set free from all that. Yeah. Amen. You know? And, and, and just on a, you know, on another note, just to cover the, you know, how do I say this to cover, you know, ourselves here. Uh, I'm a mental health counselor, um, mm -hmm. full time. And, uh, that's what my master's degree is in. And, uh, uh, we're not saying because there are some times uh, where medications are needed. If, you know, if people have mm. chemical problems in their brain, there are times because I, you know, in my practice, I, I, I do work with a psychiatrist and the neurologist and, and we do prescribe, but it's always the last resort. If, if there's something, mm -hmm. you know, clinically wrong with you where your brain is not functioning, you know, there are things that can help. OK, but we're not saying that that's where everybody runs to. It's, you know, if you have high blood pressure, then, you know, medication can help with those things. But right. we go to those things as last resorts. Uh, we don't, you know, put that Band-Aid on right away uh, when there are other things, uh, you know, because you know what there is. No, and I, I tell people in my practice there there is no happy pill. There There is no mm. medication no matter what the anti-depression medication you take, and I've been on them in my past, and I, I've shared my struggles with depression um, and anxiety and stuff. They don't make you happy. Uh, there is no such thing. No. Uh, okay. They they help your brain to fire properly. If it if it has a uh, you know a problem with one side connecting with the other, it it kind of just fix you know, wires that have been frayed, so to speak. That's mm -hmm. something that's mechanically wrong in your brain. But other than that, uh, like Tim said, if we're not allowed to go to God, because the world says, don't go to God, it, there, mm -hmm. there is no help in God, uh, then the world is forced to go to these things. And, and that's why when you go to a Christian counselor like myself and many others, uh, we have a smoking gun that a secular counselor doesn't have and that's the holy spirit mm -hmm. and i and i and i'll tell people and i i say this with everyone that i see for the first time and it always sounds strange to them and i'll tell them well the first thing i have to tell you is i can't help you i said i can't do anything for you i said but i know who can mm -hmm. and that's jesus christ and god the holy spirit mm -hmm. and uh and that you know these fears uh when they start to come upon us in this world, as the Bible says, the men, they're going to be looking, humans are going to be going around, and they're, they're already there. They, they can't cope. There's not enough pills to take unless you have a society. And I wonder, Tim, you know, they're making everything legal today. You know, this whole thing with legalizing pot. Do you want a whole generation just intoxicated under a, you know, I think they do. They yeah. want us not able to think. What do you think, Tim? Yeah, um, they want us. Uh, they want us to be uh, reliant on something, so Come. we we tune out yeah. what's going on in the world. And uh, when people should be focusing on on the Lord and focusing on on issues and problems, people you know clock in, they go to work, they come home, and they pick up a bottle or they smoke pot or they take, you know, whatever their opiates or whatever the pills, you know, and they tune out. And that's, I, I was surprised at, um, at my doctor that, um, was so quick to prescribe medication rather than try to figure out what the problem might be. And, um, so that, that was in my case, why I, uh, why I became addicted, but, um, you know, I, I see, you know, and even back when in, in the nineties, um, they, they were prescribing, I, I had a problem with anxiety and, and fear to the point where I was, I was almost suicidal because I, uh, I, I just had fear it would come up, come upon me and it would be, I was you know, there. I was yeah. there. 
Yeah. And so it was like, well, here, try uh, the Xanax and the, you know, we went down that whole road and it was like, you're walking around in a cloud and, you know, you're, you're depressed because of that. And so you're able to go outside, but you don't want to because you're depressed. And so, um, I finally went to, to my church and I told the pastor what's going on. And he said, and I, it made me angry at the time, but he said the truth. He said, you're not right with the Lord. And, uh, because Christians shouldn't, really be dealing with that kind of stuff. If you give it to the Lord, um, he will take it from you. And I wasn't, I was hanging on to things. And it wasn't until I gave, gave it to the Lord that I was able to be set free from, from all that stuff. But I was, I was, I couldn't leave my house. I would hide under the bed for days on end with the covers over my head because I was too afraid to go anywhere. And, um, Amen. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And it's, so, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a society that wants a, you know, that is unable to think for itself because when, once we get this way, you know, we actually turn our volition over to them and say, you know what, I don't know mm -hmm. what to do. So you think for me, government, you think for me, because I can't think for yeah. myself. And I, I think that's part of the reason why they want us all just zombies walking they around do. because we'll be compliant. And uh, I know we're, we're almost out of time here. We're, we'll we we'll be compliant and uh, we'll be like clay that they can manipulate and we won't think, we won't have ambition, we won't have desires or dreams. And it's, uh, uh, and again, they'll tell you, don't go to Christ. And you know, people often think about, well, like I'm just talking about psychiatrists, and I found very few that are really good. I have a couple of guys who are Christian psychiatrists that I really love that I use in my practice. But your typical psychiatrist, it's not like, like you see, you go, you lay on a couch and you talk about growing up. You, they don't even talk about that stuff. You go there, they hear your story, and they get out the prescription pad. And yeah. they start just, okay, next. There, there is no cognitive counseling and therapy. You know, they don't do that. And yeah. um, you need to know that you're loved, that there's someone who cares about you, that there's a plan, there's a future. Uh, this isn't how I end. And, you know, uh, and I just want to, because we're running out of time here. Uh, we started with Luke 21, 25 to 28, and I'm just going to jump to 26. But I, I didn't, we got two minutes left. I didn't finish the scripture. It says in verse 26, and this is Christ himself while he lived on this earth speaking, God in the flesh. It says, there'll come a time when men's hearts will be failing them for fear and, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. But here's the good news. Yeah. It depends on how you look at it. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Mm -hmm. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, mm -hmm. not in fear, unless you don't know him, okay? Yeah. If you don't know the man coming in the clouds, then you have something to fear. Then look up and lift up your heads. Don't be walking around all downed out, for your redemption draws nigh. Yeah. So the point is, you can only make it if you're not afraid uh but you have to ask yourself what are you afraid of uh because if you don't fear the lord and trust in him that he is going to rescue his church then you're going to be living completely paralyzed with fear because you haven't seen anything yet so yeah uh like Tim, you said per perfect love casts out all fear and perfect love casts out all fear yeah. and that's why it's so important to know and what does the enemy want you to know there is no god no one cares about you. You're just a, a worm. You're nothing. You're more. You're, you're just as equal with, uh, you know, a flea. You know, we're mm -hmm. just insignificant life forms that just be stepped on and moved on. That's something to be afraid of. But God says, you know, I have made you in my image. So uh, I know we're running late here, but our our goal for tonight is people, please turn over your life to Christ you experience yeah. his perfect love. And and as I think it was John F. Kennedy, so no, who said that? Uh, maybe it was Churchill, Eisenhower, who said, you have nothing to fear, but fear it's itself. Fear itself, yeah. Yeah, I forgot who said that. I don't Germany. remember, yeah. Who was it? JFK said that? JFK. In, uh, uh, 
No, I don't know. But it was I I actually think it was in World War Two. I think it might have been um, Churchill for some reason when mm. when when England was really at, you know, it was looking bleak for them. Uh, right. So, but anyway, right. I'm I'm sure someone will correct us. Uh, we have our team here. Put it in the comments, yeah. <laughs> uh, frantically looking for an answer. Uh, but while they do, Tim, uh, I'm gonna let you take us out. Uh, give a last word on fear, and then yeah. what's the vaccination for fear? Yeah. Well, <laughs> what absolutely. We like I said, uh, or we said earlier, perfect love casts out all fear. And then what is perfect love? Perfect love is, uh, is God um, sending his son, uh, Christ Jesus, to die for our sins uh, so that we wouldn't have to pay the penalty uh, that is coming upon the whole world. So um, Titus 2.13 says, uh, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, hold, hold on before you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's like hot off the presses just came oh, in yeah. here. Okay, we were all wrong. It was FDR, Frank. FDR, uh, uh, okay. Roosevelt said that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so none of us. Well, were we right. got it now. <laughs> okay, we got it. Nothing to fear but fear itself. Fear itself. Okay. I'm sorry, Tim. Go. So okay. you know, the Lord, Lord, can take that fear from us, and um, as believers in Christ, we have no fear. I mean, even uh, man can't do anything to our souls. Um, the one that can do something to our soul is is the lord you know and he uh has redeemed us through his blood um he has paid that price uh for us uh, paid the sin price so that we don't have to and uh, you can have eternal life and uh live eternally with with the lord and um if you want to do that um it's as simple as saying a prayer all you have to do is believe in jesus as your savior he he died on the cross he rose again uh from the dead and um, it's as simple as asking the Lord into your, your life uh, by saying, Dear Jesus, please forgive me. I am a sinner, and I want to accept you. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit and uh, help me to live my life for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And uh, if you said something like that, um, you're a new creature in Christ, and uh, you have started your life uh, into eternity. Uh, we are creatures made to live forever, and uh, when when Adam sinned, uh, sin and death uh, reigned throughout the whole world, so it was embedded in our DNA. So Jesus uh, came and paid that price to set us free from from death and from sin, and we can live forever with the Lord, and we will. So um, if you need Bibles, we we are able to provide Bibles. Uh, just make. Uh, make a message contact us through an email or or in the comment section and we we can get that to you also so um Amen. you know you know what and i and i know we're running time but we're going to break the rules here for a second uh <laughs> i want to also offer if if you know you need counseling you need someone to talk to you know what email us and we'll figure out a way okay mm. uh if you're interested in talking to me and uh doing a virtual session in my practice we can make things happen i i can't you know Amen. serve everybody on the planet but uh i can share my story and i'm and i'm sure tim would would do the same uh uh you know it's a big thing to wave out there but uh you know what one of the biggest things i i think at the root of fear is 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 sin we don't realize it but we're afraid of of the guilt of our sins we might say we mm -hmm. might say oh, I, I don't care but i've learned in my walk with the lord uh that if my life isn't clean and and i don't have my sin issue taken care of those sins that i run to to feel better they make me fear more mm -hmm. my anxiety the more i get hooked in my sins the more my anxiety goes through the roof yeah. and and they have to make a choice you know what i I got to stop doing this. I I can't walk with the Lord and and walk in the world, and you know a double-minded man is unstable in all mm. his ways. The Bible yeah. says so. Sin is a big part of our anxiety. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, 
uh, that's our show tonight. I, I know we had a rough start, rough middle, rough ending, but, uh, but there's so much to talk about. It's rough. Uh, it's rough. <laughs> it's rough out there. <laughs> it's rough out there. So uh, thank you all for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you, Lord willing, next, next Thursday, next week. Yeah. God Tim, bless you guys. Take care. All right. See I you, love Scott. you guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.